it makes it so much better and more enjoyable. You need the information from them to understand how you're going to do the quote. Making these calls the best call of their day. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here hanging out with Therese Potter, and we're talking about the perfect quote process. And I was a little nervous writing this, Therese, I'm not going to lie, because the word perfect threw me off a little bit, because I was like, man, the only thing perfect I know is JC, Jesus Christ, I can't lead up to that. But that's all right. I did want to at least try to create the perfect quote process. So, but before I did that, you know, one of the things I talked about in the blog that I wrote, Therese, was I can't make a perfect process and a quote process for your agency because every agency is different. So what to do is try to build up for your perfect quote process for your agency. So the listeners that are listening, I want this to kind of gear up for them to think about what the perfect quote process for them would be. And in my mind, I believe it starts with having the right technology. So first of all, Therese, hi. I just jumped right in. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. I hope everybody out there is doing awesome watching our uh, blog here, and I hope they're loving it already. That's right. And they will, because I got you on here with me, so they can okay. tune me out and just listen to you. So Therese, I'm so glad you know, you've been on the team now for a little while. You've gotten acclimated a little bit more, and you're already making a huge impact on our business. So it means a lot to me. So thank you for hanging out. But going back to your agency days, there's been, always been this debate since Kelly and I have had this. Luckily, she and I are on the same page on this, but Raiders. I believe that to have a, a perfect quote process, I believe Raiders are essential. Where do you land on Raiders? Do you think that they're essential or do you think that they're hokey or do you think they're not right? What, what's your thoughts on Raiders? Well, number one, it depends on the Raider. Okay. You have to have a good Raider. I've had experience with both. I think just the fact that you reduce the duplicate entry, you're just going into the Raider, putting all the information in the Raider, and it shoots it out to all these different places. That in itself is amazing, and it's a huge time saver. Oh, my gosh. Um, Thank yeah. you. You're on the same page with me on that, too, because I was afraid we we're going to have to fight, but I'm glad we don't. So I, I completely agree. Those that come to me or you or Kelly or Steven or whoever and say, ah, oh, but they're inaccurate. They don't give you the right quotes. Of course, we get that because you still haven't run their clue report. You haven't got their MVR report. You haven't done this. You haven't done that. So yeah, it's not. But again, you nailed it by talking about the duplicate entry part of it. Because if you can put in one spot and blast it out to every carrier, that's so much quicker. And that's what we try to focus on here at APP is efficiency. And that is a big part of that. If you can get all that done, then no matter what the rate is, as long as you've got that duplicate entry taken care of, then you can go in and clean it up and pick whichever carriers you want to go with and all that kind of thing. Am I right? And it's going to give you an estimate. So it's going to give you an idea of your carrier that's the highest price, your carrier that's the lowest price, and the ones that are in between. So what you need to do from there is find your features for your carriers and decide which features for which carriers fit your client best. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of the raters that connect to the management systems, the other plus, in my opinion, I talk about it in the blog, is, yeah, it stops with the repeat information and doing the duplicate entry, but also stores that client in your management system forever. So even if you don't write it, you've got that client in there forever. So you can call them next year, two years from now, three years from now. It's just helping you build your funnel or your pipeline, your prospect list, whatever you want to call it. Well, and another thing there, and I'm not sure, I don't know the answer to this, but does that information that you're inputting stay there the whole time, like three years? Yeah. Because recently here in North Carolina, Progressive changed their policy. So even though you have an access to Progressive and you can get in the policies and you can get in the quotes, they hide the driver's license number. So you can't see it. Right. So if you're trying to quote them somewhere else, you have to call the customer to get the driver's license number. So if you're putting driver's license numbers, date of birth, that kind of stuff into your raters, your raters are actually saving your information that you would lose if you just put it in a carrier. Possibly. Hallelujah. Yeah, you're exactly right. And I imagine Progressive's not the only one. A lot of them probably do that. And I've seen enough deck pages in my day to know that a lot of them give you the X's yep. instead of Again, technology, there's a lot of technology out there. I didn't put in the blog just because of fear of, we try to be agnostic to that, but there's so many other technology pieces out there that can help you with some of that thing, whether it's an agency app or whether it's Canopy Connect or whether it's this or whether it's that. But the main thing I want to get into just for the, the sake of time, we'll stop at Raiders. The other thing is you set up your perfect process. you got to have the right people, the right carriers. And so why would I tell people your opinion on carriers? You've worked with enough of them. Why would carriers be a big part of why to build a perfect quote process? Because you have different carriers with different features and the features are huge. 
there's different features. Like actually I have a, a client that I'm working with right now that their carrier has a, if you donate to a certain uh, cyclist club, then they give you a discount. So if you're a cyclist and you love cycling, then that carrier is perfect for you because they are donating to your community of cyclists. There's different things about features and carriers that relate to people. So you have to find the carrier that works for that person. Now, sometimes it's not features like that. Sometimes it's a feature like a, it's got a discount for the, the device for you know, yeah. checking your driving, a telematic. Yeah. Um, so it just depends. I mean, my 20 year old son was at a company, didn't know about the telematics, got it. And it gave him 15% off his rate. Wow. Um, so yeah, it just depends on what their situation is and experienced operators. There's a ton of different stuff and you have to connect those dots as the expert, as the agent that knows what you're doing, you're licensed. So you have to connect the dots, building the rapport of the person to find out which carrier will work best for them. Yeah, I'm scared to death. My son's going to be turning 15 soon. He wants a car. I want to start driving. I'm freaking out, Therese. Ugh. I have one that's driving right now. He just actually got his full license, but then he injured his knee and cannot drive now. Ugh. Well, he actually can. He's having surgery at the end of at the end of the month, and he can drive right now until then. So we tested it yesterday, and he was able to. But it's a knee injury, so if he has to slam on the brakes, I'm a little concerned. <laughs> yeah, um, but it but it actually isn't too bad. It actually there isn't you go. too bad. Um, I also have I also have an umbrella, so if you have an umbrella, think about your your umbrella. There you go. Increasing. But it wasn't too bad. It wasn't bad at all. Um, and even adding a car, I quoted adding a car to it, and it wasn't bad. That's um, awesome. So yeah, that's the big thing I'm, I'm I'm scared of. But yeah, with carriers, you never know. Going back to some of that, the discounts you might need. And let's say your agency is really big on high value homes. You're not going to want to pick some carriers that don't write that. You want to pick the ones that the Chubs and the Fireman Funds or whatever it is that want to write that high value home stuff. And um, some carriers download, some don't. Some are good at this, some are good at that. So I think a good carrier mix. And then a big thing that we talk about from Jump Street's APP with every program is the idea of Tiggers versus Eeyores. For the young people that don't know who that is, go look up Winnie the Pooh. But if you do know who that is, Tiggers are the people that we want to have in your agency. Those are the ones that go getters, the problem solvers, out of the box thinkers, all those types of people. And the people basically that fit your culture. If you don't have the right people, it can really screw up a sales process. Right. And Eeyores have a tendency to never want to change and to always have the pessimistic look at things. So they're, you have to convince them. And sometimes they're really hard to convince. And the Tiggers, so now with the Tiggers, you have to slow them down sometimes because they're bouncing all over the place. <laughs> right. Um, I, I, can, I can relate to that. Sometimes you have to slow down to speed up. And I have to remind myself of that a lot. I actually have a Lamborghini and a Ferrari because one of my previous bosses would call me a Lamborghini because I was always going so fast. So it reminds me yeah. to slow down. That's funny. Yeah, I'm that way too. Sometimes I get too fast and get going too fast and go at you know, 99 miles an hour and I forget to do something or click this box or check that or whatever. And it could really be my process. So, you know, that we've talked about kind of setting up the process for your perfect quote process. You know, the rest of it, you know, again, it, it plays into the strengths and weaknesses of your agency. But I think in every quote process, there should be a building rapport process in there. There should be a system in there or a scripting or whatever it looks like for your staff, whether they're producers, CSRs, account managers, to take at least a minute and a half to five minutes to build rapport, asking the right questions, getting to know your customers. I think it makes the fact finding part of it so much better than just a robotic What's the VIN number? What's the age of the roof? What's the square footage? It makes it so much better and more enjoyable. Right. I actually just listened to some calls and the person didn't even say, hey, how are you? I was like, oh, wait a minute. So first of all, make sure you say, hello, how are you? Uh, <laughs> yeah. hope, you're, hope you are well, something. And then from there, you there's a couple different ways to build rapport. You can either do it with personal issues, talking about yourself to connect to them. Or you can do it with the agency if you're uncomfortable doing that. And you can say, hey, did you know my agency? We're local. We've been in the community 20 years. Our owner was born in the community. Just give them different things about the agency, about yourself, to find ways to pull information out of them. Because you need the information from them to understand how you're going to do the quote. I um, was talking, about, talking to a client this morning about limits. You don't necessarily have to have a deck page to quote it. And some of our secret shopper stuff, 
some of our agents are like, we can't do it without a deck page. And that right there, that just, I think that's horrible. You don't have to have a deck page. Right. What you do have to have is enough ability to build rapport, to know that they own their home. They have four vehicles. They have inexperienced drivers. So then you can go, oh, you need an umbrella. So you have to kind of dig in to figure out what they have, what they own, what their assets are to determine what coverages they needed. And then I also do that to look at your liability limits. So most people don't know their liability limits. I always say, start up here with your liability limits because it's always easier to work down. If you start at the low liability limits and try to work up, you're going to raise the price. So it's good to give high liability limits and then, oh, that's too expensive. Oh, well, these are the liability limits I gave you. I don't know what you have right now. We can compare that when you discover them and then build it down. Yeah. And I think along the way, as you're doing it, when you're building rapport and doing it, it feels like you're just talking to your friend and it's just two friends talking and you're able to build that and they trust you. And again, it goes back to the old saying, people want to do business who they know, like, and trust. Right. And so you don't want to make it feel like an interrogation or an interview. It just needs to be one of the things we talk about in our new customer service course is making these calls the best call of their day. I think right. it's the same thing with their quote process. And you have to assume, in my opinion, and this goes back to my agency owner days, you have to assume that you're not the only call that they're making that day. You're probably the second or third call they've gotten for a quote or the first of two or three. But if you can make it the best one, like, oh, that wasn't. Even if you get, that didn't suck. I think it's better than, oh, I got to call and get a quote. But if it's like, oh man, Therese was so nice. She was so friendly. I really enjoyed it. I could see myself working with her down the road. And that's something I know I work, I think about. And I think a lot of consumers think about, can I see myself working with Therese? If I have an accident, if I have a claim, can I see myself work? Right. And and what's their challenge and how can I solve their challenge? What do they bring to the table. What's that challenge? And a lot of people say, well, it's always price. Not necessarily. It might be if the agent didn't call them something simple, but once you learn that, now you know, hey, they really need the agent to call them once a year or they're particular about this. Pin a note to your client management saying, hey, this client likes this or this client needs this attention to make sure that you don't lose them the same way the previous agent did. No, you're exactly right. And so once you've built that rapport, once you've gotten through, you gathered the information in a format that is not robotic and whatnot, we're real big on also one of the parts of the direct entry straight into a system, a PDF, a, a raider, something to that effect. I got all these dings going off here. I'm trying to stop them here, Therese. Well, and, but, and one thing that somebody told me this morning is a carrier, their site has been down for the last like month. It's hit and miss. But if you were in a raider. Yep you'd have the information entered and you wouldn't lose it. And what the problem is, is in our secret shopper calls, they said they were taking too long or they had to repeat the information. And it's because that particular carrier system is down. Right. And so if you've got, even if you don't go use, if you feel like the Raiders are terrible, have your own agency doc that you fill out that's fillable that you can transfer into your management system or transfer into whatever, something. So again, if you have those carrier things that are down. So again, I think, again, it goes back to speed, accuracy, all those things. So if you can put it into a direct entry format, it's going to be better. Now, once you've done that as part of the process as well, I bring it up in the uh, in the blog, it's just the delivery of it. And I don't know, if I had to count it, probably, I don't know, a thousand agencies I've been into. And one of the biggest problems that I see is every agent that I go into, it seems like they want to say, oh, I emailed the quote. And it's like, whoa, hold on a minute. And what you did was just, you emailed the quote so they could probably go to their incumbent and say, you hey. You click end. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. I like that. But don't you see that? You probably see the same thing too. I'm like, oh, I'll just email you the quote. And it's like, yeah. you just killed your deal. I mean, yeah, sometimes you people will say, oh, I'll write about that. But your closing ratio will be so much higher if you can have a personal conversation with them, either on the phone, live, some sort of one-on-one situation. I have a a client right now that is actually, um, he found that setting booking appointments. So he sets an appointment to go over it. And then right before the appointment or right when they get on the phone, he'll send the email and say, Hey, I just emailed it to you. Can you open it? So he schedules that appointment to be ready with the client and to send the email so he can discuss it with them. The key that I just heard you say there, you didn't say it, but I heard is he's in control of the situation. Right. By him emailing it right before they don't have time to scroll to the bottom and look at the price and go ahead and tell you no. You're able to go through it line by line. So I think that a quote should always be explained in this manner, not just emailed blindly. Because as soon as you do that, again, you're hitting the end button. I like that. 
But you're also given the opportunity to send that to the incumbent or to get confused or to scroll to the bottom wherever the price is and just not get it. Well, but and don't maybe, know the reason why the price is at. So it could be different yeah. limits or higher limits and you yeah. can't discuss it with them if you don't contact them and you just send the email. Right. Or you may, they had, they may had missing coverage because the incumbent didn't put it on there. Right. And so for you to be able to say, actually, you know, you had a big old open gap in your policy that I shored up. So that's why it's a little bit more, oh, okay. Where Steven likes to say, I could add a million dollars in coverage for only $20 more and whatever it might be. And so, oh, well, I'd much rather have a million dollars more in coverage for $20. Right. So, I mean, I think being able to explain that. And let me ask you this. And again, we didn't rehearse this. So I don't know what you're going to say, but I'm a big believer. And if you can't get him on the phone, you can't get him on a Zoom. You can't get him anywhere like that. I'm a big, I like the video call. I like sending a vidyard or sending a, some sort of pre-recorded screen share. Right, what's your thoughts on that? That's awesome. I tried to get my previous agent to do that, but they just weren't into technology enough. They had the capability of doing it, but their staff wasn't technologically inclined enough to do that. I actually had an experience this morning with our management system where I was trying to do something. And for the first time, the support sent me a video of how to do it. And I was like, this is cool. This is exactly what I needed yeah. because I'm visual. So I need to see it. Nobody else in the support had done that before. And I was like, this is awesome. So I gave her a really good review. So yeah, I think video is very yeah. cool. And I think it's a new age thing that when you send it to people, they're going to be like, oh, wow, this is cool. <laughs> and you can track it immediately. Yeah. Like I love getting, you'll get these as you get going too. And you probably already have, but I love getting the email from Vidyard that says, your activity this week. You've had 14 people watch your videos this week. I'm like, yeah, it gives me a little, and I get that email immediately and it can say, Therese Potter is watching your video. So I know I got to call them while they're watching it. And it's just one of those things that sometimes they know and sometimes they don't like, oh, I'm just not through watching it. It's like, oh, that's wild. I didn't know. <laughs> but yeah. I love the video. But again, it's better than just sending a blind email and the quote or expecting them just to understand it. The last thing before we wrap up, and uh, I wish I had more time to get through this, but for times I want to make sure we talk about it though, is, is follow-up. And I think that a big problem that people have in the quote process is, well, I delivered the quote. Well, all right. Did you follow up? Well, no. Well, how do you expect to close the deal? And I, and I, I think it's crazy that people don't do that. Did they do that at your, in your, some of your clients or yeah, agencies yeah. to work at? They do the same thing. They don't set follow-up for it. They just end. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> they push the end button by not following up. So you have to follow up at least twice afterwards, at least. Yep. And then by the third time, if you don't get a response, you know what you do next? Set it out for six months or five months for their six yep. month renewal if it's a six month policy or a year. Put in that, help yourself by getting, what's the word I want? It's not win back. The word for when you lose a quote and you don't win and you don't earn it. Oh, oh, oh. Um, uh, quote is not. What? Yeah, there you go. X day. There you go. So basically, you are doing yourself a favor by setting tasks in the system that are X dates because you're giving yourself your own lead by no, putting them in no. the system. You're 100% correct. And some stats I put in there that I learned back in my pace setters days, and now Kelly and I have talked about it too. 80% of sales require five follow ups, 44% of salespeople give up after one. No, it's like, well, I got the no and I moved on. Well, why not follow up? Just push it a little bit further and say, well, where are we disconnecting on? Or what, what can I help you solve that problem? Or find a way, like you said, what's their challenge and try to overcome that. Some people don't want to because they're lazy or they're not competent. And then the biggest one I saw was 92% of salespeople give up after four. So if you want to challenge to be a little better than them, take that challenge and be the fifth one and get that sale. Because if 80% require five follow-ups, try to get that 80%. I think that that's a, a big problem that agencies that have, they don't want to do that. So again, following by, again, I'm scared to say it, but her perfect quote process requires having the right technology, the right people and the right carriers. And then it's just a matter of getting the information in a friendly, polite, gathering information in a way that's not robotic and then directing entry into the system and then delivering it in a manner that is going to be personal and then following up. It's pretty simple. It's not perfect. Well, maybe I should change the title to, quoting for dummies but either way i think the process works and it follows right along with our apex sales program right. so if you're ever interested in that you should check that out at the website and go to look and work with us and, and find some of those programs 
and find that Apex Sales program. You could follow some of this right along there. And we're going to be introducing some of these processes coming up in our Q1 course of next year. So I'm looking forward to that too. Anything you want to add? Watch our blogs and our three minute videos. That's right. Steven's putting out stuff. Therese is putting out stuff. We've got a lot of content coming out. And so it's all free. That's the cool part. So check us out on LinkedIn, follow our travels, follow what we're doing and uh, happy new year. So talk to you later. Have a great day. Thank you, Therese. No problem. Thank you.